we want to solve the initial value problem using the method of substitution. Looking at the notes below, so far we've learned about some general substitutions, Bernoulli equations, and homogeneous equations. To help us identify the substitution, let's first divide through by x, or multiply both sides by 1 over x. This gives us y prime plus 1 over xy. Let's also subtract y squared on both sides, which gives us on the right negative 1 over xy squared. The given equation is a Bernoulli equation because it's in the form of y prime plus a function of x times y equals a function of x times y to the power of n. Also notice n is equal to 2, which indicates v is equal to y to the power of 1 minus n, giving us y to the power of 1 minus 2, or y to the power of negative 1. This indicates that v prime, or dv dx, is equal to negative 1 times y to the power of negative 2 times y prime, or negative y to the power of negative 2 times y prime. Now going back to the equation, now that we've identified n using the y squared on the right, let's divide through by y squared, or multiply both sides by y to the power of negative 2. This gives us y to the power of negative 2 y prime plus 1 over x y times y to the power of negative 2, giving us 1 over x times y to the power of negative 1, equals on the right, negative 1 divided by x y squared times y to the power of negative 2 is negative 1 over x. From here, because v is equal to negative y to the power of negative 2 y prime, and our first term is positive y to the power of negative 2 y prime, before we perform this substitution, let's multiply through by negative 1, which gives us negative y to the power of negative 2 y prime minus 1 over x y to the power of negative 1 equals positive 1 over x. And now we perform substitution. The first term is equal to v prime minus y to the power of negative 1 is equal to v, giving us minus 1 over x v equals 1 over x. Now we have a linear differential equation, which we can solve using an integrating factor. However, in this case, it is separable, and therefore we'll use the technique of separation of variables. To do this, we will first add 1 over x v to both sides, and write v prime as dv dx. Next, we factor out 1 over x from the right. And now we need to separate the variables, meaning we need the v's on the left and the x's on the right. We will multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over the quantity 1 plus v. We can also think of multiplying both sides by dx. This gives us 1 divided by the quantity 1 plus v dv equals 1 over x dx. And now we integrate both sides of the equation. On the left, the integral of 1 over the quantity 1 plus v with respect to v is equal to natural log absolute value of the quantity 1 plus v. We'll include the constant on the right, equals the integral of 1 over x dx is equal to natural log absolute value of x plus a constant. We'll call the constant plus c sub 1. Now we need to solve for v. To do this, we'll exponentiate both sides of the equation with a base of e. We'll also drop the absolute value, which I'll talk about in just a moment. The left simplifies nicely to 1 plus v. We can write the right side as e to the power of natural log absolute value of x times e to the power of c sub 1. This is because we have a sum in the exponent position, which means we can write it as a product. And e to the power of c sub 1 is just some constant, which we'll call c. And e to the power of natural log x simplifies to x. The right side simplifies to x times c, or cx. This gives us 1 plus v equals cx. Now again, let's talk about why I dropped the absolute value. For one explanation, for this line here, the c sub 1 is just some constant. I'm going to call that constant natural log c. Natural log c is also just some constant. From here, we can combine the two logs on the right because we have a sum, which gives us natural log absolute value of the quantity 1 plus v equals natural log of c times x. And whenever we have two logs with the same base equal to each other, the inputs must be equal, meaning 1 plus v must equal cx. For the next step, we subtract 1 on both sides to solve for v. And now we replace v with y to the power of negative 1, 
if we want 1 over y. And now let's continue on the next slide. If 1 over y is equal to cx minus 1, we can solve for y by taking the reciprocal of both sides of the equation, which gives us y over 1 or y equals 1 over the quantity cx minus 1. And now we will determine the constant c using y of 1 equals 2 to determine the particular solution. We substitute 1 for x and 2 for y. Simplifying, we have two is equal to one divided by the quantity c minus one. Again, we'll take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation, which gives us one half is equal to c minus one. Adding one to both sides, we have c is equal to one half plus one, or c equals three halves. Which means the particular solution is y equals one divided by the quantity three halves x minus one. But let's clear the fraction from the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by two, which gives us y is equal to two divided by the quantity three x minus two. This is our particular solution. Before we go, let's take a look at this graphically. Here we have the graph of the particular solution. The initial condition one comma two is this point here Notice how the graph does pass through the point one comma two and fits nicely in the slope field. I hope you found this helpful.